Today we're going to be cooking old school Portuguese style. This is a national dish of Portugal called cozido. Cozido means cooked. It's both a noun and a verb. It's the same way we use the word stew in the United States. You know, you could stew something or you could have eat a stew for dinner. This recipe, Cozida Portuguesa, was first published in 1860 in Arc de Cozina. Published in 1860, but you could be certain that our great, great, great grandparents were cooking like this for years. It's more of a technique, and it's more of a technique of, of using everything. So when you slaughter an animal and butcher it, you know, you're not throwing away the tail. You're not throwing away a lot of the parts we don't see in our grocery stores nowadays. You were cooking everything. You were harvesting your, your vegetables and throwing those all in to get flavor from the meat and from that collagen. You know, when you cook something for a long time, a lot of collagen comes out of the bones and the cartilage. And that just adds a lot of nutritious protein to the dish. This dish is thought to have originated in the central part of Portugal called Betis. And that's the part just north of Lisbon, but below Port kind of the heartland of Portugal. It stretches from Spain to the coast and includes one of the oldest university towns in the world, Coimbra. This dish is also seen on the Portuguese islands of Madeira and the Azores. And in fact, on the Azor island of San Miguel, there's an area called Fornage, which means I believe ovens, and there's thermal activity there from still from the volcano. And they actually place pots of this cozida, this mixture, the, They'll fill a pot full of the ingredients, dip it in the earth, leave it there for five, eight hours, come back and retrieve it, and they have their delicious cozido made by Mother Nature. Regionally, you'll see different ingredients used from you know a lot of root vegetables, parsnips, turnips. Um, today, I'm gonna put in, I planted some purple sweet potatoes in my yard last year, and I have some of these, they're going in there. So it's more of what was just known to the region. I mean, if someone caught rabbit that year, the rabbit was going in, the partridge was going in, the pig's ears were going in, pig's feet were going in. I mean, it's it's whatever the bounty provides. So don't, you know, I'm gonna give you the recipe, but you know, if you find one thing in the store, you don't find another, you know, you just go with it. You know, if you wanna put chicken in this, sometimes chicken's put in, sometimes different beans are used. I'm not gonna use rice today, I'm gonna use red potatoes, but sometimes rice is used. So. It's more of the technique and the time that's important because a lot of times when you slaughtered an animal, the only way to make a lot of those tougher pieces edible was to cook it for many hours. When collagen reaches about you know 160 to 180 degrees, right at that temperature level, right at like a, a low simmer, the collagen slowly melts and turns into gelatin and it provides so much richness to the dish. Traditionally, when you see this dish, a lot of times just all the ingredients are thrown in a pot cook it for, you know, six hours, done. But just from experience, I'd, I'd rather not have my vegetables that mushy and they will become just extremely soft, almost like everything will turn into like just ex almost no texture. So the first thing I like to do is season the meat and cook it for at least two to three hours before I add in the vegetables. Cause your vegetables cooking in this dish for an hour and a half or two hours, that's plenty to absorb some of the flavor of the meat and the collagen and to marry all those flavors together, but without it being just mush. So let's begin this national dish, cozido from Portugal. The first thing I'm gonna do is rough cut the chuck and rough cut the pork shoulder. Another thing I recommend doing, you know, when making a big dish like this, and usually if you're gonna go through this, you're gonna make it for a few people, I like to add up the weight of all the protein. So your brisket, your pork shoulder, I'm using some pork tail, pork feet, pork ears. Add that all up and then you want, I do a half a teaspoon of salt per pound. You at least want to start off with a quarter teaspoon. And that's just important to let that salt penetrate the meat while it's cooking. And dishes like this that are such big volume, sometimes if you're not as experienced with making stews, you know, a lot of times people tend to under season them. So, you know, it requires a decent amount of salt. I have a lot of herbs, Rosa Maria, rosemary, I have a bay leaf tree, I got tons of bay leaf I'm gonna put in there, a lot of garlic, some peppers, a little bit of cinnamon, some cloves. So you really wanna make sure this is seasoned well. If you're using kosher salt, you're gonna to have to increase that to about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt per pound because kosher salt's not as dense as table salt. This is pork shoulder, and you could see like all the muscle fat in there, that just adds so much flavor. Pretty big chunks is kind of like what I like to do. Anywhere from like two inches square to three inches square. 
beef chuck roast, same thing, just cut it in really big cubes. This is a piece of meat that is for braising, which is a moist environment heating, stewing, which is the meat fully submerged in liquid. So we got our pork ears in there. The other thing we're gonna add in is some pork belly. This is the same cut that is used for bacon. You can see it sort of looks like bacon, but the main difference is it's not cured or sugar's not added to it, it's just plain pork belly. This provides just a tremendous amount of flavor. Okay, so that's all our protein. I have about 13 pounds of protein here. If I was using table salt, that would be about six and a half teaspoons. Since I'm using kosher salt, that's gonna be eight teaspoons. I'm gonna measure my salt out first. Okay, so I have my eight teaspoons of kosher salt measured out. And again, this is kind of a standard, you know, somewhere between a quarter and a half teaspoon of, of table salt per pound of protein. But we also have probably another shoot, seven pounds of vegetables. This will be fine. And then I'll adjust seasoning at the end if needed. So I just like to make sure the salt is getting everywhere. Anytime you're cooking meat types of stew, it's good to pre-salt up to like a full day in advance, you know? So I could have done this last night, but if it wasn't for the video, I kind of wanted to show you technique. I would have just salted this whole container like this last night, then cooked it today. Another thing, just to do it an hour in advance helps out and you want it starting to penetrate the protein. <clears throat> this is the pork tail. Again, a lot of collagen and make sure it's all well seasoned. The first step, you know, season your meat and then after get it cooking in a little bit of water. It doesn't have to be covered, but you always want to make sure there's at least, you know, a few cups of water in the pan just to create that steam environment. That's what bracing is. And you want to make sure it's cooking covered also. So that hot steam surrounds all the protein. I'm going to get this cooking and while it's cooking, I'll chop up all, all my vegetables. Put that all in there. I'm putting about four cups. Again, this is about 13 pounds of meat. I'm putting about four cups of water. Now I'm gonna grind up some of my spices. You could use powdered also. I have some cloves, about a tablespoon, some whole black peppers, probably about half a tablespoon. Petey Petey, be very careful for Petey Petey. These always surprise me. So put a few of those in there. You also could use like a red pepper chili flake if you like. And just kind of grind that up. I'm gonna put about half the spices now. Then in about three hours when I add the vegetables, I'll put the second half of the herbs and spices in. Okay, so I have my Rosa Maria rosemary, my cloves, peaty peaty peppers, and black pepper in there. This will go for about three hours. You want it to be at a low simmer, so barely any bubbles. All right, while our meat is cooking, we'll prepare some of our vegetables. This is a parsnip. We also have a, a turnip. Put some, get some cabbage cut up. I like to cut out the core of the cabbage. Chop our onions. Traditionally, most of these vegetables are pretty roughly chopped. For example, the carrots will cut in about you know, one inch to two inch pieces. These onions, just pretty big wedges. Again, usually a waxy potato, like a red potato or, or a Yukon Gold, they hold up better than if you use something like a russet, it's really gonna fall apart if you're cooking it for more than an hour and just disintegrate. Now I'll chop up some of the cuivs collard greens in the U.S. Usually the stems all go in there. I just cut them a little smaller and then go a little thicker when I get to the outside. Now I'll peel my purple sweet potatoes. 
And again, proportion wise, kind of whatever you have in a garden or get at the store, you know, you could put twice as many carrots, twice as many onions. It's definitely more of the technique that's important, not so much exactly what you're putting in there. You know, seasoning properly, cooking it long enough. That is what you really need to pay attention to. Okay, this has been going for a, almost three hours, about two hours and 45 minutes. You can see the meat is very tender. You can see I could pull apart this piece of the chuck. So again, I, I like it cooked this way, very tender. If you don't want the meat falling off the bone, you could start adding your vegetables after cooking the meat for about an hour and a half. Now I'm gonna add in basically the root vegetables, the turnips, the parsnips, the potato, the carrot, the onions. And this is a big part of this dish, is the vegetables also, you know, cause they're taking on so much flavor from this braised liquid. I'm gonna put in the rest of the spices. This was the cumin, the pepper, the piti piti. I'm gonna put in the rest of my rosemary. Okay, at this time I'll also add in my canela cinnamon sticks. Depending on the variation of cuzidu, almost always some sausage is added. I'm gonna add chorizo. Okay, the root vegetables are in there. I'm gonna let this go for at least a half hour and then I'll add my cabbage and quiche. I like to add some tomato paste. This is optional, you don't see it in all the recipes, but tomato paste, it's more kind of just another layer of flavor. And tomato paste is known to have a lot of unami flavors, which is a flavor that comes from glutamate. It's the same flavor that makes like mushrooms delicious, soy sauce delicious. And it's also the main flavoring of why MSG is a popular flavor enhancer because it enhances unami taste in our tongues. Okay, it's been 30 minutes since I added the onions and root vegetables. Now I'm gonna add the cabbage and quiche. You could make adjustments at this time if you think it needs a little more spice, whether any of the spices or seasonings or more rosemary or more salt. It's a good time to adjust that now. You know your root vegetables are done when you could pierce them easily with a fork. Besides cooking it that long to make the meat tender, the other reason we're cooking it for a long time, again, is to liberate that collagen, to free up that collagen and turn it into gelatin. And that just adds a really rich flavor to this dish, to the meat and to the vegetables. All right, five hours later, we finished our cuzidu. It smells really good. My daughter snuck in, snuck in and tried it. She liked it also. Total cook time for me was about five hours. You could adjust the ingredients. You know, if you don't want some of the things like pork ears or pork feet in there, don't put those in. But I highly recommend, you know, the tougher pieces of meat that have more collagen and fat, that's gonna make your dish much richer. One of the main benefits of adding in like pork feet or like the, the pig's tail is there's so much collagen that's in that part of the animal that it makes it really rich. But if you don't wanna eat that part, obviously just take it out of the pot or stick to whatever you're comfortable eating. This smells so good, get a little piece of pork on there, little piece of carrot, oh, little muilu, little aju. It was so good. There's something to slow cooking. I mean, it's so delicious and it really is one of the types of cooking that we rarely enjoy nowadays. You know, everything's kind of cooked, either going out to eat or if you're cooking at home even, things are just like a quick steak on the grill. But I'm telling you, these old style dishes are so wonderful to try. So give it a try, go out and cook with someone you love.